Schrodinger wave equation. Schrodinger wave equation gives us the information about the quantum world. And this is the mathematical form of Schrodinger wave equation. Today we will derive the Schrodinger wave equation. We will begin our calculation with wave function. This is the wave function. It can be written as psi xt is equal to a e to the power iota kx minus omega t. This psi is dependent on time and position of the particle. Or this wave function gives us the particle position at a particular time. And this wave function is defined as the probability of finding a particle in a certain space. Using Euler's equation, this wave function can also be written as in this form, which is a into cos kx minus omega t plus iota sin kx minus omega t. This is actually a complex number and this is the imaginary part of that complex number while this is the real number. When we normalize this wave function, that give us a real number and that real number is of great need in quantum world that give us the probability of the particle inside a box or inside any potential well. We will derive this equation. This is the Schrodinger wave equation. By taking partial differential of this equation two times, it will give us this new value. Then we will use the total energy term or the Hamiltonian which is the sum of kinetic energy plus potential energy. And finally, after combining these equation, we will derive this equation. So let's begin with wave function. We know psi xt is equal to a e to power iota kx minus omega t. Expanding this equation with the help of Euler's equation, which is e to power iota x, is equal to cos of x plus iota sine of x. We will get psi xt is equal to a cos of kx minus omega t plus iota sine kx minus omega t. Now we will take the partial derivative of this equation with respect to x. By differentiating this equation with respect to x, we will get a is constant this cos kx minus omega t will become minus sin kx minus omega t. Here you see d by dx into sin of x is equal to cos of x. Now taking the partial derivative of this term, we will get only k. And this term will become 0. Similarly, plus iota cos kx minus omega t, the sine kx minus omega t will become cos kx minus omega t into k. Taking the k common from this equation, we will have k a into this term. Now, we will take the second derivative of this equation with respect to x. This side of the equation will become curly square psi xt divided by curly of x square is equal to ka, this is constant, and this time the sine kx minus omega t will become cos kx minus omega t into k plus iota and this cos kx minus omega t will become minus sine kx minus omega t into k. Now taking the minus 1 and k common from this equation, we will get curly square psi xt by curly of x square is equal to minus k square a into cos kx minus omega t plus iota sin kx minus omega t. Now this term is equal to the psi xt. You see here this a into cos kx minus omega t plus iota sin kx minus omega t is equal to this term. Now we replace 
this term with psi x t. So we have the final equation curly square psi x t by curly of x square is equal to minus k square psi x t. Now multiplying both sides with the kinetic energy. We multiply kinetic energy to this side of the equation as well as to this side of the equation. And classically, the kinetic energy is equal to 1 over 2 mv square. By multiplying and dividing this term with m, we will have m square v square divided by 2m. Now classically, we know that momentum P is equal to mv. So we replace mv with P square and the equation become kinetic energy is equal to p square divided by 2m. According to the de Broglie hypothesis, waves are associated with every particle and the wavelength of that wave is equal to h by p, where h is the Planck's constant and p is the momentum and the wave number k we know is equal to 2 pi by lambda driving the value for lambda from this equation we will have lambda is equal to 2 pi by k now replace this lambda with 2 pi by k then 2 pi by k is equal to h by p solving this equation for momentum we will get p is equal to hk by 2 pi and this h by 2 pi is equal to h bar. So we have momentum p is equal to h bar into k. Replacing the p with h bar k we will have kinetic energy is equal to h square k square by 2m. Now putting the value of kinetic energy in the left hand side of this equation, we will get h square k square by 2m curly square psi xt by curly of x square minus k square psi xt and kinetic energy. This k square will cancel with this k square. Multiplying both sides with minus this side of the equation will become minus h square by 2m curly square psi xt by curly x square and psi xt into kinetic energy. Now we know the Hamiltonian or the total energy of a system is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy. Multiplying this equation with psi xt or the wave function we will get e psi xt into kinetic energy wave function plus potential energy into wave function. Replacing the value of ke into psi xt in this equation with this term we will get e psi xt is equal to minus h bar square by 2m curly square psi xt by curly x square plus vx into psi xt. Rearranging this equation we will finally get this equation which is the Schrodinger wave equation. By taking psi xt common from this equation we will have minus h bar square by 2m into Laplacian and this Laplacian can be replaced with del. So minus h bar square by 2m into del plus vx into psi xt is equal to e psi xt and this is the Schrodinger wave equation. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe easy edu for more videos. Thank you.